Ahoy mateys, it's the Curse Captain Hitbo TC here with my top 5 tips and tricks for all of you solo sloopers out there on the seas. A lot has changed and understanding these changes will make the difference between life and meeting the ferryman. So go ahead and pull up your ship, have some grog ready, and we will have our pirate conversation. One of the most important things you can do as a solo slooper is mastering your ship and getting very comfortable with every square inch of it. You need to know where everything is, but beyond that you need to be able to move about your ship without having to think about it. With that being said, the sloop is the slowest ship when sailing with the wind in your sails, but where it makes up for it is in maneuverability. It has the best turn radius of all the ships, and it is extremely easy to make these tight turns that most other ships will have a difficult time doing. You will want to use this to your advantage when possible, as most ships won't follow you through rocks and tight turns. Another thing to take note is that though the sloop is the slowest with the wind, against the wind the sloop is the fastest, giving you an edge if you are being chased. As a solo slooper, you want to use that to your advantage. Other things worth mentioning here is to stay stocked up at all times. It is always good for you to be mindful of how you are doing on supplies, and at every opportunity take advantage of barrels and finding more supplies. You never know what could be in barrels and it can make all the difference in battles on the seas. Another quick tip here is to take advantage of sunken ships. They often leave behind quality items to grab and will really help you on your adventure. So to summarize this up, become the best sailor you can be and become a master of your ship, knowing every square inch of it and knowing how it works on the seas. Take the time to navigate practicing on the seas, attempting maneuvers you can use later to escape an enemy ship, and good habits of always looking for supplies and managing your sails. The combat in the seas is constantly changing, and as a solo player, it is important to stay informed of all of them. Unlike other crews, you are alone, and mastering your weapons will mean life or a quick trip to the ferryman. So let's quickly cover some of the basics. Each weapon is different and has different damage. As a pirate, it is your responsibility to know what damage each weapon does and the best use for them. Let's break it down for you here. The Cutlass does 20% damage per slash, and with your combo of 3 hits, you will do a total of 60% damage. Now the Lunge will do 50% damage, which means 2 lunges back to back will make quick work of any pirate. The Flintlock does 50% damage, which means 2 well placed shots will end a pirate's life and send him directly to the ferryman. The blunderbuss does 10% damage per pellet, which means if you shoot a pirate point blank, they're pretty much done for. Another note here is the blunderbuss is the only firearm that has knockback. Last but not least, we have the Eye of Reach, which does roughly 70% damage per shot. Now with the consideration of the damage, the next thing you want to keep in mind is the reload times of each weapon and the fire rate. Here I'm going to show you in real time the difference between all the weapons as they have changed. As you can see, each reload time is a little bit different. The most important thing to keep in mind here is with your playstyle, picking the weapon combo that works best for you. Let's talk hip fire. All the weapons have different bullet spread, making them effective in various ways except for the Eye of Reach, which is basically worthless when it comes to hip fire. So if you're going to be playing with the Eye of Reach, you will want to practice up on that quick scoping. Last but not least, and definitely worth mentioning, is the Eye of Reach, Flintlock, and Blunderbuss all have a delay when bringing them up. So, if at all possible, always try to start your fights with your guns up and ready to go. That way, you at least can get a shot off before switching over to your sword or other weapons without delay. Final thoughts here. 
find what works for you and the style of gunplay and swordplay you prefer. Recently, I've been enjoying the Eye of Reach and Sword combo simply for the fact that the hit registration seems to work a bit better on the Eye of Reach due to the bullet speed of that weapon. As a solo pirate, the importance of the proper food and having a full health regen bar cannot be stressed enough. You need every advantage you can get and having something as simple as pineapple or a mango versus a coconut or a banana will again mean life or death. So you want to always be on the hunt for the most valuable food items and always keeping them in stock. Let's quickly cover them here. A banana has a health recovery of 20%. A coconut is 30%, a pomegranate is 40%, a mango is 50%, and a pineapple, my beloved, lovable pineapple, is 100%, and not only that, you can get it with two bites with the pineapple, so having this on hand is the best thing you could possibly have outside of meat. Speaking of meat, let's talk about it. Meat can be broken down into two tiers. Tier 1, you have chicken, pork, snake, and shark. When cooked properly, provides 50% on your health and a quarter toward your health regen bar. Tier 2, you have Kraken and Megalodon meat, provides 100% health and half of your health regen bar. Now let's quickly talk about fish. Fish can be broken down as well into two tiers. Tier 1 is the basic fish when cooked properly, 30% on your health and 12.5% towards your health regen bar, while Tier 2 are the trophy fish when cooked properly provides 75% health and 37.5 of your health regen bar. Now a quick note here on the health regen bar, it will only kick in if you have not been taking damage for 10 seconds, so in the heat of combat don't rely on it. This would be a good opportunity to run away and try to dodge to give your health regen the time it needs to work. Solo pirates need to get used to this idea. If you never risk anything, you will never get any rewards. Remember, this is just a pirate game, and because of that, you need to remember that nothing worth getting is without risk. You just want to do calculated risks. If you have a ship full of treasure and you see a fort pop in the distance, maybe go turn the treasure in before attempting to do that fort. That way, if some pirates do decide to ruin your party at the fort, the only thing you lose is your time. If you're on your way to another island and there's an outpost in between you and your marked island, maybe think about stopping by and turning in the treasure that you have. That way, you're almost always in a state of having nothing to lose, which makes you a more dangerous pirate because a pirate with nothing to lose and willing to risk his life for a reward usually results in some pretty epic adventures. Last bit here. I earned my Pirate Legend title a long time ago and I did it through mostly solo slooping. How? By the advice I shared above. I took risks, but I took calculated risks. I ran from fights when I had a full sloop of treasure, usually turning into the wind, and turned around and fought when I felt like the risk was worth it. Which leads me to my last and probably the most important tip. You will hear me oftentimes say this to my crew, what I mean about keeping your wits about you is that in any situation you face as a solo pirate on the seas, it is in those intense moments what separates you from the swabbies and it is your ability to read the situation before you and make the best possible decision on what to do next. Basically mates, you don't want to panic. When you're in a fight you want to keep in mind things like what ship type is it which will let you know how many enemy pirates you may be facing. Is there a gunpowder up in the crow's nest? How much ammo do you have? What kind of food do you have? And how much? This list could go on and on. Basically what I'm trying to say here is you want to be prepared and you want to always be reading the situation at hand. Now here are some quick super fast bonus tips for you all. You can view the map table from up top on your sloop, making it very easy to read the map on the go. The sword lunge is your best friend as a solo slooper. You can use it to get around quickly, and it is very effective in combat situations. You can grab the ladder from inside the sloop, which, if you are trapped down in the deck because pirates have taken over your helm, you can use this trick to sneak attack and surprise them. 
Only do the most profitable voyages. Gold hoarders, you want multiple X's. Order of Souls, you want more than three bounties at least. And the merchant, well, you're just after the black and the gold animals. Don't waste your time on riddles, bounties with only one captains, and absolutely do not waste your time on cargo runs. They are terrible. Always keep your ship ready to leave at a moment's notice. This means keep your sails up and your anchor up and keep your ship pointed in a direction that will let you just drop the sails and will let you get out of there. Practice boarding by lunging off the front of your ship and trying to catch your own ladder. This gets you familiar with how to board other ships and it's a bit of fun to do when you're kind of bored. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you really enjoyed it and you want to support me, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And of course, don't forget to hit that notification bell as well so you never miss a new video. Last thing I want to mention here before I go, you can also check out some of my other top tips and tricks video for the Sea of Thieves that I have out there. So make sure to look those up right here.